All right, let's, uh, why is this being stubborn? Okay, whatever. Let's go ahead and go through one of these. Now, I was not able to get the, these signs off of there, but you can just scratch those out. What I'm asking you to do for problems one through four is write me equations for sine and cosine and tangent. So for each of these, you're gonna write me three equations. And basically you just need to put some numbers in the top and bottom of your fractions. That's all I need you to do there. So let's review how we're gonna do this. We'll go back to our triangle and mark our reference angle theta. And then we're gonna label hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent. I always do my hypotenuse first. It's across from the 90 degrees. The one across from your reference angle is your opposite. And the one next to your reference angle is the adjacent. So we're just gonna be putting these three numbers into these fractions to help us remember which numbers go in which fractions. I'm gonna go ahead and write down our cheat code up here. So, ka toa. The first part of this is gonna remind me that sine is opposite on top, hypotenuse on the bottom, opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite was 24. Hypotenuse was 25. Cosine is adjacent on top and hypotenuse on the bottom. Adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent was seven, hypotenuse is 25. And then TOA, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite adjacent, opposite adjacent. So opposite was 24, adjacent is seven. So for these first four problems, we're just writing out the equations for sine, cosine, and tangent. Any questions on number one? I'm gonna move ahead now and do a couple of the problems down below. So please bear with me if you'd like a review on how to write and solve trig equations. Problems five through 10, can I get everybody to look up here for just a sec? I know a lot of you are working on two and three and four right now. Notice in problems five through 10, you're finding a side. When we write an equation and we're solving for a side, we're gonna be solving, our variable is gonna end up in the fraction, right? When our variable's in the fraction, which method are we gonna use? Are we gonna use inverses or are we gonna use cross multiplication? So for all of these problems, you're gonna do cross multiply. You will not do any inverses from five to 10. When do we use inverses? When we're solving for the angle. When we're solving for the angle, that's when we use the inverses that we learned on Monday. So I just wanna make a note of that. So I'm gonna do a couple examples with the cross multiply method where we're solving for a side. And then I'm gonna go over one example where we're gonna use inverses. If you missed any days, or if you'd like a little extra review, stick with me again, otherwise feel free to ignore me and work on your own. So I'm gonna do number five right now. I can see I'm solving for a side, so I know I'm gonna cross multiply. We'll start with the same steps we did before. Mark your reference angle, label your sides, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Let me get my cheat code on here. So Katoa at the ready. Now this time around, I have to pick the appropriate trig function. 
So I'm going to circle the hypotenuse because it has a value, and I'm going to circle the adjacent because that's what we're solving for. And I'm going to go to my SOCA TOA, and I'm going to ask myself which one of those has the adjacent and hypotenuse. It has to have both of them. And the only one that has both is my cosine. So for this one, I will be writing a cosine equation. Get that set up here. And then I just need to get all of the pieces in the appropriate places. All right, we know that the angle always goes in the parentheses. Our angle is 38. This is cosine, so it's adjacent on the top, hypotenuse on the bottom. Adjacent over hypotenuse, bx over 5. All right, so we've got our equation. All that's left to do now is to solve it. I'm going to go ahead and turn both sides into a fraction. So I'll put the cosine 38 over 1, and that will allow me to cross multiply. On this diagonal, I have 1 times x, and that's just x. Equal to, on this diagonal, I have 5 times cosine 38. So this is one of those ones that's really nice. You do one, you do your cross multiply and you've already got X by itself. So at this point, I just need to type that into my calculator to get my final answer. Five cosine 38. My calculator is telling me that's about 3.9. Sometimes you have to do an extra step of algebra. I want to pick one where we have to do that. Um, let's do number seven together. Please stop me at any point if you've got questions. I'm going through this kind of quickly because it's, we've been spending some time doing this already. Let's stop me if you've got questions. Okay, number seven, mark your angle, label your sides. Okay, partners. Opposite, adjacent. We need to pick our trig function here. We are dealing with this time hypotenuse and opposite. Which one has hypotenuse and opposites? Hypotenuse, that's going to be a sine equation this time. Get our pieces in the right spots. Angle always goes in the parentheses. My angle is 25.1. Then sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So this will have a five on the top and the X on the bottom. And it's when X is on the bottom that you end up having a couple extra steps of algebra. Did I show you guys the shortcut? I think I showed some of you the shortcut. Okay. So I'm going to do it the kind of the long way. It's really not that long. Um, because some people aren't very fond of shortcuts. So put a one underneath it and cross multiply. So if you're cross multiplying basically these two problems, whether the X is in the top or the bottom, your first step is going to be the same cross multiply. So I got X times the sine of 25.1 on one diagonal. equals, and then I've got one times five on the other, which is just five. Oh, we're so close. All I need to do now is divide on both sides by sine 21.5, and that'll get the X by itself. If 
5.1 the other. Cancel. X is about, and I'll let my calculator do the work here. I'm doing five divided by sine 25.1. My calculator is coming up with about, if I rounded to one decimal place, that seven would need to bump up. So 11.8. All right, I'm just gonna do one more here where we have to use the inverses. We'll do number 11. Does anybody have any questions on five or seven? I see a lot of you are kind of just working on your own. That's awesome. For those that are sticking with me, thank you for your attention. Let's do one more together and then I'll be quiet and let you guys get after it here. All right, same first step. We're still gonna mark our reference angle. We're still gonna label our sides, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. Second step, also the same. We need to pick our trig function. This problem is dealing with opposite and hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse, that's sine. So we're writing another sine equation for this one. And I'm anticipating using an inverse, so I'm just giving a little space before my fraction bar. <clears throat> parentheses there's always the angle this time my angle is theta that's just a greek letter it's just a variable if you're super opposed to it feel free to use x and then sine is opposite over hypotenuse so four over ten so this one's different from the two equations that we just wrote and solved because here the variables on the inside of the parenthesis, that's when we need to do the inverses. So to get this theta out of here, to cancel out the sine, I need to do a sine inverse here and on the other side. That's why I left a little gap there. Because sine inverse cancels with sine and that gets us just theta all by itself. And I just need to use my calculator to type in the inverse sine of four over 10. So some space here. So inverse sine, you're gonna need to, for most of your calculators, you'll need to tap the second key and then the sign that should give you the sign with the little negative one, that's your inverse sign. And we're doing the inverse sine of four divided by 10. Coming up to about 23.6, that's an angle, so it'd be 23.6 degrees. Okay, so we've done examples where we cross multiplied. We just did an example where we did an inverse. Could I get you guys to flip over to the back side and look at 15 through 24? Notice that these are all mixed up. On some of these, you're solving for a side and some of them you're solving for an angle. Okay, so I need you to start practicing looking at the problem first and kind of anticipating how you're gonna solve it, all right? On number 15, are you gonna use cross multiply or are you gonna use inverses? You'll end up using inverses because we're solving for an angle. What about on number 16, cross multiply or inverse? Here we're solving for a side, so we'll use cross multiply for that. So be thinking about that. You've got two different kind of ways that we solve the equation, depending on whether you're solving for an angle or a side. All right, you guys have the rest of your time. Um, answers are on Canvas. I'll put them up on the screen here in just a moment, too. Please let me know if you need any help.